It wasn't that many years ago that the Kanawha River was essentially dead, unable to sustain any aquatic life. But the Kanawha is also a river in recovery. The DEP's Greg Adolfson joins us now from the banks of the Kanawha with a look at just what went into bringing the river back to life. Kathy, most summer days you'll find the Kanawha River full of people boating, fishing, or just out relaxing and enjoying the water. But that's not always been the case, and it's still something that's on the minds of longtime Kanawha Valley residents. You know, when you get down below Charleston, the canal is really a mess. It actually stinks. I don't see why they can't clean it up. After all, they have enough brains to figure out how to make those new detergents and those fancy plastics. Why can't they figure out a way to clean up their water instead of dumping all that stuff back into the Kanawha? It's a disgrace. In his 1962 documentary, Crisis on the Kanawha, filmmaker Stuart Finley detailed the pollution common to the Kanawha River. This is the ugly end of the Charleston complex. It is a cluster of chemical manufacturing plants along the banks of the Kanawha River in West Virginia. Submerged pipes draw river water into the plants. Intriguing, often secret processes take place as chemicals and synthetics are made. And then comes the great payoff. The used water is turned back into the river with a little extra bonus of contamination for good measure. I think the, the biggest problem was um, summertime, the, the river from all the industrial waste and, and municipal waste that were being discharged into the river they have an oxygen demand and basically that waste would pull the oxygen out of the water and that caused fish kills in the summer. So every every summer in the Kanawha back in the late 50s and 60s there were fish kills in the river and I recall a story, uh, one of the gentlemen that, that has since retired, one of his first jobs he told me was to um, to go to the river and, and scoop up the dead fish basically and haul them away so they didn't stink and that was in the Dunbar area. Another gentleman told me uh, that he, he was a kid and he grew up here in Charleston, that every summer they would go to the, uh, the bridge over the Elk River and watch the catfish come up sucking for air. And here's why. Water samples taken throughout the summer of 1963 showed no dissolved oxygen, zero in the Kanawha River. Today it's a different story. You'll still find industries along the banks of the Kanawha, but what you won't find is untreated water being pumped back in. That's thanks to the Clean Water Act of 1972 that set in motion a way to clean up the nation's polluted streams and waterways. It gave us two tools that are very powerful. One is it gave us permitting authority so we could regulate what was coming out of people's uh, discharge pipes. And the other, it gave us an ability to help municipalities fund uh, their wastewater treatment plants. First there was grants given to municipalities to, to fund treatment and now it's a, it's a loan program. Uh, those two major initiatives combined with states uh, given the authority to, to set water quality standards. It's taken a lot of time, money, and hard work, but those efforts are paying off. DEP Cabinet Secretary Randy Huffman. The Kanawha River drains the heart of the Appalachian coal fields, and it is one of the most diverse, uh, biologically diverse bodies of water that you'll find anywhere in the country. It's clean. That I spend, I spend hundreds of hours a year on the river. I know what's there. I'm intimately familiar with it uh, from, from one end to the other. And I think that's, a, and it's not always been that way. In my lifetime, it hasn't always been that way. And I think that's a testament to, uh, a testimony to, to what all has been done by, by many groups or many people over the years to, to make the environment cleaner. Those that were like myself that were born and raised in Charleston, just looking from one side of the Kanawha Valley to the other uh, 30 years ago versus today, there's a difference. There are still problems that need to be addressed. Problems like combined sewer overflows and stormwater runoff, and the lingering effects of toxic pollutants like dioxin, PCBs, and mercury. But Kathy, the Kanawha River today is a great example of how regulators, industries, and municipalities can work together to make a difference. Thanks, Greg. Crisis on the Kanawha was produced for Orsanko, the Ohio River Valley Sanitation Commission. Formed in 1948 to control and abate water pollution in the Ohio River Basin, Orsanko represents West Virginia and seven other states that form the Ohio River watershed. 
Every June, Orsanko organizes the Ohio River Sweep, where volunteers work to remove trash from nearly 3,000 miles of shoreline along the Ohio and its tributaries. The DEP is one of many agencies partnering with Orsanko for the annual River Sweep. We'll have that story next time on Environment Matters.